I will try to prepare uh, together with uh, Gabor, with uh, Michael, and with uh, Thomas Britzko the last part of this conference final remarks. In this case, I will kindly ask, invite Gabor to join us and to make the final comments or statements on behalf of LZ team. Uh, thank you, Romita. Well, when we are uh, trying to assess uh, what we have been doing uh, at the end of a conference, uh, we evoke the goals we, we set at the beginning. Uh, I would say that we had uh, four more and less explicit goals. The first one was showing the outcomes of the uh, editor project to the larger public and to check the reactions. That was perhaps the most important. Uh, the second was supporting the, uh, the editor community uh, to develop uh, common professional approaches. Uh, because without this, it's not possible to, to, to create a common uh, doctoral program and to involve in this process a larger number of people than those who have been uh, active uh, in the project uh, uh, so far. So that was the second goal. The third one was enriching the knowledge basis of uh, the editor curriculum and to produce uh, new uh, material uh, for future editor students. And the fourth one, uh, which was uh, less explicit, rather practical and organization goal, to try to keep the flow of our discussions in the relevant track. So this is why we produced the, the, uh, the issues paper. Uh, we wanted to use that instrument for that. Well, I come to the conclusion that basically we could achieve uh, both of these goals. So I think that we can be uh, satisfied with, uh, with that. Uh, when thinking about uh, what should I uh, uh, say as a conclusion, I told myself, I asked myself which are the five points I would uh, underline. So I, I, I identified the following five, five points. The first one is, of course, that the feedback we got uh, so far uh, from those uh, not directly involved in the editor development work has been basically positive. So we can say that what we have been doing so far is close to the European mainstream and we managed to avoid the risk that every project uh, is facing to get closed, to get locked in a closed project uh, world. So this is the first point. The second point uh, is that uh, we are uh, working, we are moving in a, in a, in a European or EU uh, policy environment which is particularly favorable uh, for us. It's quite easy to move in this environment. Uh, the European or EU action is supporting not only effective teacher education but also the enrichment of the knowledge base which is very important for us. So that's the second point. The third point is that we are working in an extremely challenging environment characterized by high level complexity. So this high level complexity is what came out from, from uh, many uh, presentations and discussions, which uh, has an implication that uh, we need sophisticated analytical tools to cope with this uh, complexity, what we call teacher education. Uh, I particularly uh, uh, lied and I would like to stress the, the, uh, what we heard from Francesca that we have to think about teacher education as a complex ecosystem and uh, to see the dynamic of this complex ecosystem. And I think that we have to follow the, 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 the guidance given by Mikhail in the introductory presentation to be as simple as possible, but still as complex as necessary. So to find the, the balance between the two, that's very important, I think. The fourth uh, point is that the, the theory practice nexus uh, remains and probably will remain in the future uh, the most important uh, problem uh, for us. Uh, I think that no other question is more relevant than this one. And I think that this will be uh, in the, the case in the future. Uh, but 
what I could perceive in connection with this here in this, uh, this conference is that we know much more about this nexus than let's say five years ago or ten years ago. So I, I see a clear progress of our knowledge about this uh, nexus. And we are also putting, we are also beyond just putting questions, uh, but we uh, also have, uh, uh, we can observe existing good solutions, good practices of how to cope with this uh, nexus. So that's a major uh, thing and that was very explicit here at this conference. And the last, the fifth point is that, uh, uh, is that uh, um, I think that for us who are thinking about how to define a doctorate, what we call sometimes professional doctorate, sometimes we avoid to use this term, but we, we, we say doctorate for professionals. So for us who are struggling with that, uh, the most important that we got uh, lots of uh, valuable advices from, the, from those who were uh, together with us during these two days uh, about what the content of such a doctorate uh, could be, uh, uh, how to think about the knowledge which is needed in such a, uh, a doctorate. Uh, so I think that we got a lot of inputs to develop further uh, the, the, uh, our curriculum. And we also got a special outcome, uh, which I would li like to add to this five points. And this is that uh, we got reinforcement that we are working in a fascinating area. So this is an area which is intellectually stimulating. We could experience that during the conference. And this is an area where our intellectual work uh, may have real impact on real practice. And this is also a great thing. So thank you. Thank for all those who brought in valuable input to, to our uh, discussions. Thank you very much, Gabor. And wonderful overview about the conference outcomes. Thank you so much. You have acting as the chairman of the conference, and we are very grateful for preparing everything, and especially the issue paper. Thank you. It's time to ask Michal Schratz to share with us some lessons possible learned? Yes, some learnings I want to share. Uh, in our project we came up uh, with some scenarios of two types of students participating in uh, the future uh, EDT program and I tried now to look at this conference from a perspective of um, being at one of the EDT uh, conferences and I want to share five learnings from that, which we might um, develop further, because this is the fifth meeting of the Edite group uh, having this conference in between. And ELTE has been responsible for implementation. So by showing how to implement it, I want to point out some experiences we have had in the process uh, of the conference. First one is what I think we can learn is that it's important and it showed at very many instances that research can be made meaningful by giving it a context. I think having a context which was uh, important for each of us, we could very quickly make use of what people from different perspectives could say despite the complexity. And I think that's necessary for any research development process when we uh, talk about young researchers learning to become uh, PhD um, uh, students and uh, become part of academia or academic reasoning. The second one is transnational dialogue is a total human immersion experience. Uh, being exposed to a different culture, to a different setting, to different people does something to you. It, it has an impact and I think this is something you can't grasp in your own country. You have to expose yourself to the strangeness to find out what makes you strange compared to um, what you regard as normal. Then. It's a marvelous experience to 
expand the notion of academic life. And in a way, now referring to Giddens' theory of uh, agency and structure, I think you see by going to a different academic institutions like ELTE, we've heard, heard a lot of ELTE, you know, uh, Gabor and the team tried to explain to us what it was, but it's only when you are here that uh, you experience how structure and agency influence university culture, which is lived here the way it's lived, and in some ways very different. But we go home taking with us ideas we have grasped here, and I think everybody else has. The next one is, of course, an obvious, but still worth mentioning, exposure to other views on school and the world at large is uh, very thought-provoking by finding out the different people's views. We experienced that in our workshop, and you probably all did it in yours. Yeah? We, we, we suddenly were confronted with very different views from our own, and this, I think, is what makes academic life so challenges and pushes further towards innovation, change, and improvement. And last, but not least, we need each other. Only together can we change, probably not the world, but hopefully improve teacher education and the future of schooling. So I want to thank you all uh, participating and contributing and giving us the chance to see it works if people are dedicated, if they are open and if they are committed and uh, I think this has shown this was a, has been a very successful conference and I hope the ones who are not joining us for further business on the project that you will follow us in the future steps of Edite, and I'm sure our ways will cross again, but on a higher, different, whatever level. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael, for inspiring us. And now it's time to give the floor to the European Commission and its representative, Thomas Prisco, to expressing uh, in a few words, how the lessons for the European Commission could be taken into account after a DTEC conference. We are very grateful to you for your presence and please also wish uh, all our greetings to Paul Holsworth, our old friends. Together, probably, we'll go forward with this project and we hope to have you very close in the future. Thank you so much. The floor yes. is yours. Thank you, Romita. I'll be very brief um, about the lessons that I will take back to Brussels uh, from this. Um, yesterday I, I told you about how uh, um, there's a lot happening at EU level uh, in terms of policy cooperation on this field, but also in terms of uh, um, funding opportunities that we offer and that we would like to see to translate in some, something that EDITE uh, um, corresponds to in so many ways. You know that through the Erasmus Plus program, um, we, we try to support innovative approaches uh, in teacher education. Um, we support strategic partnerships and, and try increasingly to cross boundaries, and that's very important in this field uh, in particular. Uh, I've seen it from your comments yesterday we're really at the uh, interface between what typically sometimes is known as the school education sector and the higher education sector here because it happens in, in both and we need to make sure that this link is there. Um, and on top of that we're going into uh, the fear of doctoral programs here so um, there's a lot of expectations for um, the editive project and what will come out of it now. Um, I should also add what I didn't mention yesterday in terms of the political mandate that we have, the consensus that there is in, in Europe. Um, these council conclusions these, uh, of, of May uh, of this year, they also specifically mention, and I didn't say that yesterday, research as, um, as, 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 a, as an important part 
of uh, ensuring effective teacher education. So it specifically says, A, uh, teacher education should be linked to the latest pedagogical research, but it also says that uh, member states should uh, create the conditions where higher education institutions, um, teacher training colleges, universities doing initial teacher education should become hubs of teacher education that do not only have the task of educating teachers and teacher educators, but also of conducting research on teacher education. So here we are, um, and I think we have editor here with a very pioneering avant-garde role, and uh, as I said, there are big expectations, and uh, we wish the project all the best for the next steps. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Pisco, for wonderful and generous word addressed to uh, editor team. For me, it was a great privilege to chair uh, this session. I'm sure that this conference editor, uh, and uh, of course uh, in Budapest here in Elte, will become a turning point uh, on the European approaches, policies related to teacher education. I am very much grateful to and appreciate the contributions, high professional expertise, and full commitment of speakers, panelists, chairs, discussants, reporters, and to all active participants to the great success of this event, which will remain probably it's on the history of education, uh, this event as a multi-E conference, because it's E from education, it's E from editor, it's E from ENTEP, E for ELTE from ELTE, and why not E from Europe, which is probably the most important E for all of us and the main reason which will bring all here together. But there are, although, some exceptions. The first one is G from Gabor. <laughs> there is another one, it's C from Chila. There is another E from Erika, E from Eva, and of course, O from Oshola. The last but not the least, it's a T from Timia. The wonderful ELTE team, which need to be appreciated and congratulations for a wonderful job. <laughs> if we don't have any other E, probably we should invent as a special one for other exceptional things excepting probably a DITE, which will existing for a long time in the future European teacher education area. Thank you so much to everybody for accepting this day to be or become an E from the EDITE large community. Thank you so much.